If you've ever been around a car before, chances are you may have noticed that they have springs. That is called suspension. It suspends the car above the ground. Suspension can be designed for any number of things, including keeping the car going faster over bumps, getting it over rougher terrain, keeping the occupants comfortable and safe, or even just preventing bumps from damaging the car. But not all types of suspension are created equal. And the two I'm going to discuss today are the independent suspension systems used on pretty much every car today that isn't f***ing American, and the torsion bar suspension system seen here on this Kubel wagon from World War II. Today I'm going to talk to you about why torsion bar suspension is awesome, how it works, its numerous advantages over other suspension systems, as well as why it's not used today. Like most cars today, this Polaris Ranger uses independent suspension. And all that means is that the wheels can go up and down independently of each other so that they won't affect the other wheels' movements as they're going over different terrain. There's lots of types of independent suspension, but this is using the most common type, coil spring suspension. Coil springs can either have a linear or progressive rate of compression. A linear rate of compression just means that the spring will impart the same amount of force for every inch that it's compressed together until the very end. Engineers can also make progressive coil springs that will move easily the first few inches, but get stiffer and stiffer the higher they go up the shaft. So it can easily cushion light impacts, but muscle through tougher terrain. To better help you understand, I made a Lego model. I'm a psychopath. Coil spring suspension will take up more overall volume than torsion bar suspension, but it can be isolated to just a single part of the vehicle, making it extremely easy to engineer for. Coil spring suspension's main flaw over torsion bar suspension is the fact that it pretty much only goes up. When coil spring suspension travels over obstacles at speed, there's pretty much no motion that it creates to cancel out some of the horizontal force that that obstacle imparts onto the vehicle. The vehicle basically has to wait for its own suspension to travel upwards in order to continue moving, and that can cancel out a significant amount of the vehicle's momentum. Simply put, going over bumps slows it down. This Kubelwagen, on the other hand, uses torsion bar suspension as opposed to coil spring suspension. And don't be confused by these coil springs right here. That's just to support the shock absorber. That is not what is powering this suspension. What's actually powering it are these torsion bars that run across the whole vehicle and are connected to these arms. Torsion bars are just bars of steel, or in this case, a bunch of strips of steel uh, combined together, and that way they are pinned in place in the middle and also pinned to this arm, but they're allowed to freely rotate in between them. So when this goes over a bump and the wheels are pushed upwards, that is twisting the torsion bar, so it has to stay in place on this side, but it's actually twisting on the other. So the steel, the spring steel, is trying to resist the torsion of this um, twisting that's caused by bumps and terrain, and so it is trying to force the wheels back down. So it's imparting the same exact force that a coil spring suspension or any other type of suspension would be using to keep the wheels on the ground. As you can see, torsion bars running across the vehicle could cause problems for many modern vehicles. Modern vehicles, even though this is less volume than coil spring suspension, simply don't have the room to have huge bars running across their width. The other problem that torsion spring suspension brings is that it cannot be easily engineered to have a progressive rate of compression. All springs, in some sense, are progressive, just naturally, but there's no real way for engineers to control what amount of force 
the springs will impart at what stage of their compression because they can only control just how much force the torsion bars give and how much resistance they give in the first place. They can't do any exact alterations to each stage of the process. That being said, torsion bar suspension does fix the one key flaw that normal independent coil spring suspension has, which is instead of rotating out and in and only really going up and down, being unable to dampen horizontal forces that hit it, torsion bar suspension rotates back and forth across the length of the vehicle so that when it hits a horizontal bump, it will not only go up like all other types of suspension, it will also travel back somewhat. And in that way, it allows the vehicle to continue forward without imparting that much force on the vehicle as the suspension is overcoming the obstacle. So it uses up significantly less energy and cancels out much less of the vehicle's inertia when going over bumps. That is the key advantage of torsion bar suspension, and that is the key difference. That is why it feels smoother to ride in this, and that is why it will go over bumps while losing significantly less speed. But I've already explained why torsion bar suspension isn't used today. It's too awkward to fit along the width of a vehicle, and it isn't programmable to be progressive like coil springs can be. So today, you'll only really ever see it on old Beetles because cars today have simply replaced it with independent coil spring suspension. But pretty much the opposite is true of tanks. Volute springs and coil springs have long since been replaced by torsion bars. Torsion bars' ability to maintain speed over bumps, as well as their overall smoothness, has made it far easier for tanks to make more accurate shots on the move. And it's because of those same traits, their smoothness, their robustness, their ability to maintain speed, that torsion bars are awesome. Sure hope this car doesn't run me over.